as long as you know, you know, reasonable temperature on with Friday night's a little bit excessive. What's this Friday? Friday? We're supposed to be in Luray. Yeah, you got big color. Probably, right? uh, probably not. Look, let me show you what it says for Brightwood. Yeah. In the wood. This is what it says for Brightwood Friday night. Oh, you see the real field below it? Yeah, you gotta be at least that. Yeah, it's always five, six degrees cooler in Luray than it depends on what part. Normally, it's about the same as it is like mine and your house. Yeah. Uh, it's not too much different. Six degrees on Friday night. Five degrees Saturday night. Yeah, well, whatever. The, it didn't give a windshield. Let's, let's see if it's changed yet or not. No, it's still, still down there. Apparently, we might see some snow, too. But if it's going to be raining... And then that cold's coming. I'd rather be snow. That way it's not a yeah. sheet of ice everywhere you go. Hey, man. What's up? How you doing? How are you? How are you, sir? Yeah, how are you? Ready for the weekend? We got a corn. We do have five of us. Yeah. Oh, that's it. If Nathan's not here, we'll I don't. No, Nathan's not going. Nathan's not going to be here. <laughs> yeah, he will. Five, there's five. That's that's a majority. Yeah. We can't have any less than that. <laughs> I mean, it's a work session anyway. We're not taking any votes or anything. So, uh, you know. Yeah. I think there'd be more, more people in attendance, probably. I mean, some some planning commissions only have not five people. No, I'm saying like, in the crowd, if there was. I don't know. You might get lucky. I think you may have some. I didn't even make it up to see the honey hunt because they all had COVID. Oh, really? Yeah. So I didn't. I was going to see if I could bring one down on the fourth if we needed it. So this ain't even gonna come up. That's right. Yeah, try to close it. Yeah. yeah. Now I just came to see what this was. Yeah. I didn't want to call you back. Oh, that's all right. You can call me anytime. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, unless you feel like sticking around, you know. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just a bit up here. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Let's yeah, we'll see, Robert.
Yeah, I'll do it. That's not his. I think he's just made it. That was the coffee. If I was to go in here and spend all of it, I'd have money. Here we got five people. Let's reference the Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I called them today. Yeah. But, good. Are you, uh, are you giving up? Free, are you doing free steaks this year? Thank you. I appreciate well, now it. Now that he's doing it. I heard when uh, free steaks. Well, well, that's right. your own joke. Thank <laughs> you, Zach. Am I missing a piece of paper? He was proud of that. I mean, uh, yeah, well, it's all fit, you know. Yeah. Oh, you got it. <laughs> that's it. Keep okay. early reading more. <laughs> or is that last week? <laughs> Did you, I like your Did you see it on his car? Okay. Uh, on his what? I got it on his car. Yeah. I can't tell the players. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. We have uh, five out of nine, so we've got a majority anyway. <laughs> so uh, we need to review and approve the agenda. Any question about the agenda? Anything we need to add? Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? Moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. We need to review the minutes from two meetings, from November 2nd joint meeting and from the November 16th workshop meeting. Uh, I have a question on the November 2nd meeting. Uh, and of course, Nathan's not here, but do we normally identify the Board of Supervisors liaisons meeting with us when the Board of Supervisors is behind us meeting with us? No, no I didn't think we did. So we, we might need to mark through that part of the we normally do for the workshop, but not for the joint. So I think we need to. It, it doesn't hurt for it to be in there. I mean, but it won't hurt to leave it. It does not hurt to leave it. Okay. They were here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other question on either of those? Okay, if no questions or suggestions, can I have a motion to approve uh, the November 2nd minutes? So moved. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, like sign? All right, the November 16th minutes, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Moved and Second. seconded. All, of, all uh, in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. <laughs> I think probably I was yeah, recording it, I think so. Okay. As always, uh, with the cases, we will have uh, information from Legan following giving him a chance to answer any questions from the commission. Uh, the applicant will have a chance to address the commission and answer any questions. And then if uh, there's any public comment, we'll have that afterward. Okay, case number SU-12-22-32, Rooted Land Company, LLC, Mr. Zachary Whitman, has applied for a special use permit to operate six short-term rental units on two adjoining parcels which he owns. The two parcels combined contain roughly 257 acres and are identified on Madison County's tax maps as 37-7C and 37-11. The 100-acre parcel 37-7C is zoned A1 agriculture and in this zoning district more than one short-term rental on a single parcel requires a special use permit. Currently this parcel contains one 
by right three bedroom short term rental unit and an additional three bedroom short term rental unit is proposed. The adjoining 157 acre parcel 37 11 is split zoned C1 conservation and A1 agriculture. And a special use permit is required for more than one short term rental unit on a single parcel. Currently, this parcel is undeveloped, but four short term rental units are proposed. The proposed four short term rental units would be a three bedroom unit and three one bedroom units. The subject parcels are located on Grace Mill Road, Route 662. <clears throat> the existing dwelling located on parcel 37 7. C contains a postal address of 2410 Graves Mill Road, Madison, Virginia. All right, Ligon, anything to add to that? Sure. Um, so if you go to the map, right, that's, that's Alan right there. It's good. You can see 37-7, uh, that's one right there. So on that parcel, there is an existing dwelling in a garage studio apartment and on, on and, and one existing septic tank, two wells, uh, there are two tanks and one drain fill. Um, at the north of that parcel, there's another, there's a proposed, won't be one additional uh, short term rental proposed for that parcel, three bedroom, that'd be a stick built. And they don't tax map um, 3711. Uh, they have two septic drain fills approved. Uh, those are in the packet. And just if you've looked at it, they're actually expired. But in order to re-up those, you just simply have to apply for the construction permit and they will, uh, the health department will uh, re-up the, uh, the the time limit on it. So just as an FYI, there's a three-bedroom perk and then a, a two three-bedroom perks. One would accommodate a stick-built house. And the other three would, uh, the other uh, park site would accommodate a, a three park model. And I say park, not as like in a park that you go to, but as in parked. Um, uh, in those, you know, I, I said that Madison Vine has the same sort of thing at uh, uh, at their facility. Um, it will be connected to electric, water, sewer. Uh, I've been talking to Zachary about this proposal. I've been here for three and a half years. I think he came in a month after I got here when he purchased the land. Now, he does own an adjacent property of 100 acres as well. So there are three parcels there, about 375 acres that he owns. It's right behind 37-7, that, that parcel in the green. I think when he first came in, it was, you know, he had the one rental, and he still lives in the uh, studio apartment. Kind of thought about doing a, a wedding venue, uh, maybe multiple uh, rentals. Uh, you know, the last few months, we've seen some pretty large proposals. And I think my comment was, it really doesn't fit in some of the larger proposals. And, well, we have one here that, quite honestly, with the division rights, the, the ability to put one rental, a uh, short-term rental, each parcel, uh, he really, we know that two of the six are by right. I mean, they could divide and really almost get the same thing without really having to proffer, we're not proffer, or really have to work with any conditions. And I'll get to those in a minute. Um, if you look at, um, before we get to conditions, access road and VDOT, um, as far as traffic counts, you can see that down Graves Mill Road, once you, once you pass, I think it's, go, uh, was that um, Garth Run Road? You go from a little over 800 trips a day. That's what at least the 2020 traffic counts had. Do you really drop off about 350? Um, in between Garth Run and General Banks Lane, which is where this uh, uh, entrance is located, uh, you have a little over 300 trips. So you can see, you know, once you get to, to Garth, it really drops off. They don't have a traffic, a peak hour. They do have a peak hour from Wolftown Hood to Garth Road. is about 70, what was it, 77? 
an hour. I, I would suspect you're probably somewhere in the 30s as the peak hour there. So it's a low volume road. Um, as far as accidents and looking what's what's happening there, a wolf time going back 56 months. We've uh, had they've recorded seven accidents. Uh, I want to say let me make sure I got four of those accidents involved deer. One was a pretty serious one where did have a uh, medical attention had to be called. I had to rewrite this in the report, but the other three, uh, you know, non-animal related, uh, two were near the intersection of Wolftown Hood, uh, and the other one was. Uh, I think it was beyond uh, Brian sent me the accident reports. It was past this particular proposal. None of those required medical uh, attention. So uh, the road is curvy. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's got a few a few blind spots, uh, but for the volume that we're looking at here, uh, you know, I think one could argue that you know if if it was several three, four bedroom houses back there are subdivided, it probably would be more as far as a daily trip generator than maybe, you know, kind of uh, trips that are generated from this from kind of more heavy toward the weekends. Uh, so that's just sort of a little background on the traffic. Um, on conditions, uh, I mean, the big, uh, the big one here that, you know, the applicant is willing to just make this run with the applicant. So uh, sort of a, again, he, he plans on being there and operating this and being on site. Um, something that we kind of gone both ways with uh, on these type of proposals. But if he's willing to do that, then there's, I don't think there's any, any reason. Uh, I think it kind of gives a little more assurance to the neighbors that they have any issues they can deal with Mr. Whitman. Number two, uh, he has talked to some neighbors, and there's a little bit of an addition to number two. Be limited to six down, sh six short-term rentals. If you look at number two, the one thing added to this that Mr. Mr. Whitman is fine with uh, is that, and I'll just read it. Maybe it could be worded a little differently, but essentially, applicant has proffered that that he he will not request any revisions to this SUP, nor will he submit any application for a new SUP, which he would seek to increase the total number of short-term rentals in the two parcels. Um, maybe, you know, normally maybe something that we wouldn't include. I mean, the neighbors could come and want short-term rentals. I mean, uh, you know, you just have to come back uh, here. But uh, if, if, if that's something that uh, he thinks what makes his neighbors more comfortable than what he's proposing, then I don't see any reason why we couldn't add that to number two. Um, number six, you know, we do allow up to 15 events a year, uh, large scale events, large scale outdoor events. He is, and number six has, has you know, stated that there will be no events. It's not saying that maybe the people who rent, if someone was to rent all the units, they couldn't have a small scale event but it'll be nothing uh, to the public, no outside events. He's not going to do any concerts. So the one suggested revision to number six is no outdoor commercial events and no outdoor private produced events shall be held on the site. This includes events that are open to the public, whether paid or free, as well as events that are invite, as well as events that are invitation only. So, I mean, that's pretty much saying there's no events going to happen uh, on the site. No amplified sound. And we have the number of cars, which he already has that with his guest, number of cars, no more than three for the three bedrooms and no more than one for the park model one bedrooms. And the last one is just simply he does have a right of way to come through Berry Mountain. You know, there's a bridge to cross there. I mean, the chances of that bridge flooding out, it's going to have to be one heck of a flood because it's pretty high up. But I mean, it doesn't hurt to have a, uh, another means of ingress, egress. So Berry Mountain Lane could be used as an emergency entrance. You had to get in. There was a flood or something. Uh, and there's also an access easement just down from this principal um, entrance that, again, on the the rare occasion there was emergency that could be used as well. 
Um, so those two revisions, maybe additions to the uh, to the conditions. Um, you know, again, as I see it, you know, again, uh, two of these rentals could be by right. So even though we're asking, he is asking for six. You know, uh, I think I said in one of the emails, we just put his at six, and that's what he's going to do. But uh, two would be cons would, would would technically be by right as the one he is operating. But uh, other than that, I'm going to keep rambling here. But um, again, just kind of go back to I know we've been through short term rentals, and we, you know, no, we went through a month or so ago. <laughs> Um, 256 acres, you got six, six short-term rentals, three of them are one less than 400 square feet, um, willing to proffer not to add any more to it. I think that's pretty, pretty low impact by my humble opinion. Yep. Okay. Any question? Yes, Mike. Um, do the, uh, do you know if the neighbors were that access point on the Berry Mountain Road. Do they know that there's a deeded easement through their property? It's just, they, do, yeah. they do know that. This was with uh, Anita a couple weeks ago and lawyers are up putting together for liability, but the discussions are made, but there's got the promise and it's a promise I'll stick to. Yes, we'll not use it as purely for emergency in terms of the SUV. But there'll have to be a road put there, right? I mean, is there a road there now? The road, road. Yeah, satellite doesn't really show one, so. Yeah, there's an existing road and a, and a gate and it goes off of Barry works around the property. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, why don't we go ahead and just and have you yep, go ahead to the mic and, and yes, yeah, since yes. Well, the RVs, they are recreational vehicles, obviously. Are they going to be maintained to be movable, or are they going to be able to be a fixed entity? Well, I didn't answer, but it's going to be connected to power. Uh, now, whether or not he puts on a permanent foundation is really sort of up to him. Uh, but and also got to be within proximity to the septic field. So they're going to pretty much be right where he says they're going to be. Uh, I think what Danny's getting at is it's, it's a different category if they're left on the wheels without any uh, skirting the around or anything. Yeah. Is, uh, the building officials will have a say in that because yep. these will have to determine whether he wants to leave them as movable vehicles or a permanent structure, and that will depend on how he can settle. Mm -hmm. Well, he's going to have to have a, a foundation that's uh, going to put foundation, him on take all the tires off or what? Mm -hmm. I mean, at this point, we like just looking out. Good now. There, there we go. go. <laughs> at this point, talking to Jamie and Ligon, in terms of how it's structured on the ground, the manufacturer has done both. They have created rods that we can weld and put into concrete settings on the ground if we want to lift them up. Um, that is kind of my initial intent. Jamie says that they will not require permits actually either way. Um, so I guess I will look to the recommendation of the, the building code link in the, your office. Yeah, he, he says, that, you know, that it's you just can't live in it full time. Uh, if it's a short-term rental, that that's that's okay. But it's just something that someone can't live in full time. But it, it you know, it, it's uh, with with it being connected to power and all that. I mean, if he wants to put it on a permanent foundation, he can. If he doesn't, that that's so that's okay too. Yeah. It, it'll, you have to get a permit for the electrical. Yeah. For the for the for electrical, has to get a permit. <laughs> I think the question is, does he have to have it on a permanent foundation? No, he does not. He does not. Uh, um, I, along those lines, I do have a question. Uh, I don't, I'm not that up on the building code right now, but I do know that in terms of what banks require, which I assume has some foundation in building codes, they treat uh, a quote, mobile home on a foundation totally differently than they treat a mobile home that's just up on blocks. So, I mean, there are two different categories we're dealing with. Yeah, so well, it does make a difference. it's personal property versus real estate. Um, well, that's part of it. Right, yeah. right. But the build, I mean, I've talked to, we've talked to Jamie about this and I've talked to him with, with Zachary and I mean, he's clear that there's a special code for RVs, the recreational code. And he just says, as long as it's not full time, living then yeah you got to get a permit for the electrical well, and uh, even if he doesn't have to have a permit yeah. it's a new form he, he can do whatever he wants yeah. but even at madison vines 
those in order to be called cabins. He has those with skirting around them. But the wheels are still on them. The wheels are still on them, but the they're up on them. Yeah. We had to get, we did the plumbing at Madison Vines, but we had to get a permit for each building. Mm -hmm. Well, he's too hard to permit for electric and plumbing. Yeah. He's not going to get him out with no permit. He should yeah. have to. I, I'm surprised. Oh, he told him that. Yeah. A building permit is what Jamie specified as you would get for, for a home. The electrical permit, the plumbing permit, and, of course, the septic with, with the health department. Um, just additional anecdotes. I will skirt these as well. Mm -hmm. um, and quite frankly, for tire rot, there'll be something to stabilize it. You don't want to, you don't yeah. want an RV rocking. So <laughs> hurricanes some, don't cut it sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I don't yes. think there's anything in the new code that specifies whether you have to take tires off or leave them on. Yeah, but I know the old code, code before this one didn't. Right. Didn't make any difference. As long as long as they're some kind of a permanent with skirting, you know, off the, off the ground. Yeah. 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 And the, the manufactured buildings don't have uh, the, the building official inspect the construction of the build of the manufactured vehicle. But I think he still does have to do the electrical installation and the plumbing and so forth. Yeah. OK. Um, so that's yes, Pete. Yeah. I guess my, my one question or concern is, let's say that you put these six short-term rentals in and the economy goes to hell in a handbasket or, or if some unforeseen thing happens and you're not able to rent these six short-term rentals and they start setting there, you got any intention that they'll become long-term rentals or are they going to stay short-term rentals regardless? I have a few family members that will probably move up here if that's the case. But uh, no, seriously, to answer your question, not long-term rentals, no. Because what I see happening here in the county, short-term rentals and bed and breakfast is growing faster than kids. And the supply is definitely <laughs> growing. <laughs> and, <you laughs> definitely. Know, I, just, I just don't want to see you have six units seven hours you can't find it. Yes, sir. You remember now, the short the RVs can't be full-time, so they, they wouldn't be allowed. Just, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? How far are these uh, other units off the river in elevation, roughly kind of? Um, the, the river at that point is 608. Um, the highest one would be around 690, which would be the northernmost. I think I call it site A in the label. Um, site B is 640, um, and it's on the edge of the FEMA floodplain. Um, and then site C, similar to site a probably 80 feet off of elevation i have i actually have the survey with the the uh, uh perking so i can actually get specifics on that but is this a, what flood what flood zone is, is this a, an a flood zone is this a do you know what, flood you zone what this is? jamie said so it's it's i think it's a is the actual flood zone uh -huh. it's x so it's outside they're all outside yeah of the, mm -hmm. the 2020 2022 model. Yeah, I think it's 2020 was the last one. Yep. And look, I would probably say that the traffic count was probably run during the week because in summertime hours, <laughs> spring hours, or whatever, there is a lot of hiking that goes on at the top of the mountain yep. there and off to the right when you go back to where the guy built the, the big house up there. There's a lot of cars going in and out there during the weekends, but that traffic count was probably during the week. No, it says weekly. Um, uh, yeah, weekday. I think it even says annual weekday traffic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an, an, average annual weekday traffic. That's right. Yeah. Any other questions? And where's the event venue? Where, where's that proposed site? Which there is no event venue. I thought I heard that's a, that's a toxic no, word. I, yeah, no, <laughs> I thought I heard he agreed not to do. No, that was when I first what, what Ligon referenced when I first purchased the property three years ago. Um, that was a, a dream or an intent, but okay. But again, having lived in the community and speaking with neighbors. Okay. Any other question for the applicant or for Lee? Okay, I've Thank got. You, I got one, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, <clears throat> Ligon just said that 
you would be living on site and taking care of this. Correct. So, I mean, if there, if you've got six units on these properties served by that one entrance, where are you going to live? You're going to build another house to live in? At, at some point I may on, on the other property that isn't included in the SUP. Okay. Uh, but at this point, as Lincoln mentioned, there is a mother-in-law suite. I call it the man cave um, that I live in there on site. Okay. Cause you know, we have that, and I'm sure Ligon would say we have the <laughs> six on one, six uh, uh, units on a driveway, yeah. right? So the well, six it's... units we've been describing are all rentals. So if you had another one, that's. Well, it's not subdivision. Huh? It's not a subdivision. So that, that would six, six on a driveway w would be lots. Um, so parcels. Six uses? I mean, if you want to call it six different uses, but he's got plenty of acreage. Yeah. I mean, he's got 250 some acres. So. Okay. There's, there's one common entrance right now coming off of Graves Mill Road. <clears throat> and it's serving six livable units and i i thought i recalled us when we were talking about that ordinance change that we did well a month ago or so um that a short-term rental would count as a as a unit on on a private drive right y'all see what i'm saying <laughs> so yeah i'd have to look at the subdivision orange because i think we, we're really on that situation, we're really talking about, uh, you know, if you had five lots and you added, an, I was talking that that was related to private road maintenance agreements, is getting the maintenance well, that agreement. Was part of it, yeah, right. Um, <clears throat> I just want to make sure, right? We, it, no, I mean, I I feel pretty confident in saying it. It doesn't really, right, Sean. It's. I remember the. Say <laughs> very good. We're all impressed. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I recall that there was some discussion about it. None of the discussion related to this type of context. I mean, that was what we were talking about is what I'm going to call the traditional model of somebody building on an existing private road and getting closer to the um, limit um, pertaining to it. Um, sitting here, I do not know what our ordinance says about that, but that, that's certainly a point worth exploring. I think we assumed at that point there's going to be six different owners, you know, and this is yeah. going to be a single owner and, and two different tax yeah. maps. Yeah. I, I think you're correct about the, uh, uses number though, because we're, that each of these units would require the three acre minimum. Actually, of course, you're not actually on the conservation C1, are you? None of these, these are all, still on all in A. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. the three acres per unit is <clears throat> well within that. Yeah. Right. Any other question? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, as far as another discussion item, uh, Ligon, you said we've got a... Oh, uh, I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. I was trying to get home. <laughs> Any public comment? I think we might. Yes, sir. Identify yourself, please, and make sure the mic is on. There you go. Hi. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Mitch Bernstein. I live on Graves Mill Road, down the road from Zach. Um, and I just want to say that uh, I've talked a lot with Zachary, who's been very transparent. And it's, I'm not really representing neighbors, although I am one. I can't speak for all of them. But I do know that many or well, several of the neighbors share my sentiment about how important it is for the um, Planning Commission and hopefully the board to accept into the document uh, Zachary's proffer on condition two, where he will proffer, he will not try to expand the number of units, either by revising this SUP or just coming in with a new SUP. And he's shared that with us verbally. Um, he's put it on his website and we believe him. I mean, he's a good guy, I try. but as they say, trust but verify kind of thing. And so if that were to be written, 
into the, the it would it would allay a lot of concerns, at least of the people that I've been speaking with and myself and my wife as well. So I am just would hope that the board and the planning commission would take that into consideration in deciding to accept that um, uh, proffer. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is, is it off? Yeah. It's on. My name is Phil Sterbling. I live directly across from, from Zachary, and I've been over and looked at his property. And I only have one concern, uh, and it's not so much with the houses. I mean, I think he's addressed the housing and the lighting. My concern is the road. When you come down that road, if you've ever gone down it, you're going to go down a hill and then at 55 mile an hour, and then there's a hard right turn to get into his property. Uh, now, originally, when he had all of the uh, houses, I think VDOT said that that wasn't going to be a commercial, that wasn't good enough for a commercial entrance. So my question is, and I know I'm not supposed to ask questions, but uh, is, does this require a VDOT uh, right of way, not right of way, approval for that turn? Now, the, the second solution is, is for uh, uh, VDOT to reduce the speed from 55 to 45, because people don't go 55 down that road. They go 60 and 65. <laughs> I see it all the time. One of the cars, the, the accidents, uh, the car burned right in front of my house. I don't know if it hit a deer or what it was, but it essentially caught on fire and burned to the ground. And that was on the property. And my house sits up, up off the road, but... <clears throat> Uh, so that, that's my one concern is, is, is that road and, and it's, it's dangerous. Now I've talked to the postman cause I asked him about moving my mailbox, uh, to the other side to make it a little bit safer for him. So the, you know, he's on the other side of the road. And so I, I moved it. And what he is, what he was concerned about is he said, every time he stops in front of Zachary's mailbox, that somebody's going to come down over that hill and rear end him. So, now, now, Zachary, I'm not, you know, objecting to this. I'm just concerned about the safety of the road, where it is, and the, the speed limit. And I've seen as many as 60 cars parked back by the uh, uh, camp, where, not the camp, the, the trailhead, the Graysville trailhead. I've seen them go all the way up to Wesley Bush's property, which is where that, the, the uh, entrance to his property. So there, there is a lot of traffic there on the weekends, especially now because people want to get out and they want to do stuff. So we're getting more traffic on weekends than, than you think. Anyway, that's all. Thank you. Any other public comment? Uh, my wife and I, Judy, live across the street from where Zachary proper property is. And uh, would you identify yourself for the record, uh, please? Ken Elias. Okay, thank you. Um, I just had a couple of general questions. Why is a special use permit needed on, you know, what's he got? 150 acres, 200 acres there. Um, we try to re, uh, reserve this for comments, not for questions. Okay. Just, just, you know, um, try to make a point. And... The other point I'm making is I don't know what a short-term rental is. Does that mean it'll be a weekend or just one day? Or I don't know what some of the terms are in this uh, things he's requesting. And then he identifies a barn home. Now, is it a barn or is it a home? So I guess that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Judy Elias. I'm Ken's wife. And again, we own the property directly across the road um, from Mr. Whitman. Um, I too, at the risk of being repetitive, um, want to voice my concern about the traffic 
and the nature of the entrance to this unit or these units that he's proposing to put up, notwithstanding any larger invitations that might be issued by any of the renters, the number of cars that could possibly at peak usage go in and out of that driveway on a daily basis is 12. And as uh, Mr. Sterbling indicated, it's a downhill run over a rise in a 55 mile an hour zone where people don't drive 55. And I think that we have to go on record uh, for the county in case someone is killed and someone turns around and sues the county because they didn't require VDOT to approve the entrance. I think VDOT needs to take another look at this entrance. And I think the Planning Commission or Board of Supervisors <coughs> needs to put it as a stipulation on the special use permit. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other public comment? Legan, since we have basically two questions that have been raised, uh, could you address those yeah, so, that the speed and right. what, are, what the I, short I think I said is? it. I'm going to get comments from them for the uh, mm -hmm. for the meeting, and they're still looking at. But I mean, Zach, Zachary's gone back and forth with them over years, you know, and I've mm -hmm. got some old emails. Um, at 55 miles per hour, it doesn't meet the site distance. So I think what I said the county should do, and I talked to the I read out rep is just initiate a traffic study. It takes 48 hours to do. They do a, they put some, I guess they put some tubes out there and determine the speed. I think a 40 mile per hour speed limit there would help. It's not an ideal entrance, uh, regardless of, uh, you know, uh, what's approved. Uh, but I kind of fall back on the fact that it, it could be subdivided. Uh, and I, I sort of feel like even if it was just, you know, people's homes back there, you're still going to have that issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll get comments in the pack, you know, for, by, by January 4th. And I said, I've talked to them. I know what they're going to say that ideally, I mean, they don't, you know, we've been through this before and I know on duet road uh, with, you know, they want to move an entrance and we kind of declined. Um, I just would, the way I've been told, you know, at least my, my conversations with VDOT is that this is approved a conditional I'll recommend that we just immediately initiate that that traffic study it's not like those houses are going to be there in next year or so um, and I think in all likelihood the study would come back to lower the speed limit there in that section okay so it's, it's 55 it's 55 by default because right. there's it's not it's it's not post traffic study would be like the first step to determining what an appropriate speed limit there right would be. right yeah. okay um, and I, I mean, they, they feel like, and I feel like they would come back, they'd say, yes, we can lower it to, to 40. And, and that's still probably even at 40 for what it's probably not going to be the it, most, it, the, the entrance is just not ideal under any circumstances. Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like if we reduce the speed, there's some 40 speed limits, aren't there? Okay. With, within 35, I mean, that's, yeah. that's even better. Uh, some point changes. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly where the point is, but I have some property on that road, so I know that at some point in there, that speed limit changes from 45 to 55. Maybe this gentleman knows exactly. I don't. It's at the top of the hill. As soon as you get to the top of that hill, it becomes 55, which makes no sense to me at all, because then it's, it's, it's just crazy. Well, yeah, but there's it's the hill past it, but there's a hill, there, there's a couple of hills. But and I always felt that the speed limit dropped because there used to be a policeman that had a house and was able to get it uh, just slow down. But it just, we do roadside cleanup, and it's dangerous on that going up and down that hill. Uh, Clay, I will say the hollowback lane entrance is a yellow post at 40 for the it, it's it's a 40. It is 40. Yellow post. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, they, they, they didn't. Yeah. You know, I think we've questioned them before and we'll just request that it be 35. Um, and, and I think that's probably the best that we can do uh, on this. Um, and another thing, Ligon, I, uh, I think it was Lester Oots Lane. Uh, we, as I recall, 
I had a citizen contact me and said, you know, everybody's speeding down the road. It was, it was no, no speed limit on it at all. And we requested that they make it 25 and they did, I, I guess a study ensued and then they, they did it, but we actually asked them for that speed limit. I, remember I, that? I'll ask. They, yeah. yeah. I'll but ask Willis if we can just, uh, yeah. I'll ask Willis, uh, our VDOT people, can we just put it at 35? I mean, yeah. what, what did it take? They didn't think, I mean, the way they left me the impression it, it wouldn't be real complicated. If there, if there is a 35 that is before it, right. uh, extending that just a little bit further. But, and, and, you know, people do drive, I mean, you, I mean, you might see the occasional people, tourists or something, but I mean, the traffic data shows that it, it's not a traffic, people are being careful. When I, when I go there, I've been to the site, I slow down you know, over the hill, you know, but now if you're coming from out of town, you might not know that. So I think it's important that it be a post at 35 or whatever by there. Okay. How about just a, a quick run through they had a question about what the short-term yeah a uh, short-term rental is any yeah. time you know think of a hotel room anything less than 30 days and that's what our code that's what the state recognizes if you stay somewhere for less than 30 days your short-term rental that means you're subject to short-term rental transit oxygen taxes um most i'd say the far majority like you said are going to be weekends um i mean they do have weekday traffic but just it's um it's a fancy way of saying uh kind of a overnight accommodation a hotel a room or but it's uh um it's just that um and i you know what would you say your occupancy is now on your one rental yeah 60 70 percent very good um and <laughs> we got a lot of short-term rentals in the county and i've heard a lot of you know just from talking to folks there's a lot of competition, so uh, some have seen a little bit slowing. Prices have sort of dropped a little bit, but this is an FYI. Hmm. Yes, Mike. Hey, so Legan, does this say this does well for him, and we've allowed him to do? If if he decides, I, I don't want these trailer type units any longer, and he wanted to move up to a permanent structure of certain some sort. Of, can he, is he allowed under what we're getting ready to do? I mean, do I, I think we have to come back. I think we have to come back with a, a new special use permit. Which we've said that he can't come back. Item number two, we're going to say that he can't yeah, come I back. Guess, yeah, I mean. Right, right. But right. If he's, if he's re, I think what Mike's saying is if he's replacing them, the three with. I still say that he'd have to come back with a. Unless he was swapping out for a like for a like, you know, to putting in, a, you know, uh, say 20 years from now, those park models are seeing the better days. I mean, he could swap out a like for a like, I would say. But if he was going to stick build three cabins there of the same similar size, I would say just come and make your special use permit as long as you don't increase the density. Same number. Right. Can't add on to a park model, uh, but I'd say no. Certainly, add on to mobile homes around here. So. <laughs> and that is a condition we can yeah. include in the special use permit. I mean, anything like that, if anybody else has any other thoughts about it, the place to put them is in the special use permit rather than guessing what an interpretation might be later. Just remember, a special use permit is basically zoning particular to that lot. And it is the it's the same effect as a zoning ordinance. Hmm. Okay. Any other question for Ligon? Public comment or anything on this? Yes, sir. I second Sean's recommendation <laughs> yeah. that we that we put in that we can't. Hit add any rooms to the can't make them any larger than they currently are as proof. Okay, thank you. That's exactly what we're trying to do tonight is do this kind of thing. To 
uh, add on to yeah yeah or make them larger that's what i was trying to yeah say. i think just add a condition yeah. they can't be expanded um yeah <laughs> well it technically doesn't have to agree to it in a special use Not permit a special use permit with conditional rezoning you're correct but that's the difference between the two although practically because they're all so carefully negotiated the line between what the county is requiring and what the county is asking for gets blurred would a septic field would have to go along with that anyway wouldn't it believe it right if he was adding bedrooms, the, right? Even the three the three tiny homes are on one three bedroom approved septic field on well, and then the electric meter. Mm -hmm. So it's it's on it's on that. Okay. Well. So, and, and and just so y'all are aware, they are three bedroom septics, and mm -hmm. they all approved for five. But knowing the concerns of everyone, I chose to go three versus five. Okay. Any other question? Any other public comment? Okay. Thank you. That being the case, I think we had one more, uh, more or less letting us know something coming up, the discussion item. Right. So on Good Hope Baptist Church, they will be amending it. I mean, here's a question we just were asking about amending special use permits. In the ad, we clearly say that the 12,000 whatever square feet is the upper and lower level. That's what I thought it was. But if you look at the sketch that we're provided for, you get a lead to fine print. That upper level was 12,000. It doesn't change the footprint. It's what they've showed us. But the architect just spread the conditions and said, I think we need to change this. I said, you're right. So we'll simply run the ad over, have the correct exact square footage because he's doing the building plans now. And I mean, my report and that's going to change, but just, to, you know, just make sure we're, you know, we're right on what we, um, what we approve. So that will be just amended. And it looked like February. Mm. So. Yeah, just, none of us noticed that the drawings had 12,000 on each level there. So we're a little busy, yeah. <laughs> no. but I, you know, again, just an oversight. So I apologize. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any additional items that, for the Planning Commission? All right. Since we, do we have any additional items that a member of the public would like to bring up? Nope. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. And Merry Christmas. You all have a great Christmas.